One of the giants of Gothic literature, Edgar Allan Poe set the standard not only for the genre's creepy plots and characters, but also for what it means to be goth. Depicted in portraits dressed in black with haunted, sunken eyes, Poe's bad boy behavior, excessive drinking, vicious feuding with other writers, and harsh criticism of other literary work would fit as well in a punk fanzine as it did in the literary magazines where he made his name and reputation. Edgar Allan Poe was born on January 19, 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts. His parents were actors and separated when Poe was young. He was orphaned at the age of two after both his mother and father died in December 1811. The wealthy John and Francis Allen adopted Poe and raised him in their Virginia home. He was schooled in England and attended the University of Virginia briefly. After a short stint in the military, Poe began his writing career. Initially, his poetry was not commercially successful. In August 1835, he began working for the literary magazine, The Southern Literary Messenger. He got off to a rocky start due to his excessive drinking, but within a few months, he was named editor. He published some of his fiction as well as reviews, but was primarily known as a critic. In 1836, Poe, now 27, married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia. Starting in 1838 with the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, Poe published a series of stories and poems that established him as a master of American literature. Later works, such as The Raven in 1845, broke new poetic ground. These poems and his theories of composition helped to develop modern perspectives on the aesthetic value of poetry and short stories. In an 1846 essay, Poe laid out what he considered to be the essentials of a good short story, exemplified in The Telltale Heart, chiefly unity of impression, wherein a distinctive tone carries throughout the short story. Further, Poe was a founding father of several fiction genres, such as the modern horror story, the psychological horror story, and even science fiction. Yet, Poe's artistic successes were darkened by personal trials and tragedies. After losing his wife to tuberculosis in 1847, Poe's alcoholism and depression worsened. Fittingly, Poe's death was somewhat mysterious. On October 3rd, 1849, he was found in a street, badly dressed, delirious, and unable to move. He died four days later. His last words were reportedly, Lord, help my poor soul. Gothic literature emerged in the late 18th century with the publication of the 1764 novel Castle of Otranto, written by the English novelist Horace Walpole. Gothic literature accented mystery and the supernatural, focusing its attention on the irrational. Narratives often deliver fragmented information in order to build suspense and mystery. The Telltale Heart is no exception, with its eerie setting and possibly mad narrator. The American short story grew in popularity due to the growing availability of magazines. Poe was extremely influential in the short story genre, being a pioneer in laying out the rules to the short story. For example, readers should be able to finish a story in one sitting. Writers should strive for unity of effect, and nothing should distract from the story's design. Although they should be imaginative, stories must always tell the truth about human nature. Lastly, Poe's life and psychology provide useful perspectives on his work. Poe lived through the deaths of his mother, foster mother, and wife. This affected his psyche deeply and is an important thing to consider when reading his work. The narrator of the Telltale Heart decides to kill a rich old man whom the narrator claims to have loved. The narrator offers no reason, but mentions the man has one blue eye that is very disturbing. The narrator describes a detailed plan, sneaking into the old man's room for seven nights. On the eighth night, the old man sits up and asks, who's there? But the narrator doesn't answer. The narrator waits a long time and eventually decides to open his lantern. The light shines directly on the old man's blue eye. At that point, the narrator hears the old man's heart beating, but then it becomes so loud, the narrator fears the neighbors could hear it. The narrator opens the lantern and surges into the room. The old man screams, and the narrator moves the bed on top of him, suffocating the old man. Eventually, his heart stops beating. The narrator is sure the eye won't bother him anymore. As proof of his sanity, the narrator describes his cover-up cutting the old man into pieces and hiding him below the floor, leaving no trace of evidence. Not long after the narrator finishes at 4 a.m., there is a knock at the door. It is three police officers who are responding to the neighbor's complaint of a scream. 
the officers come in and they sit above the floor where the old man's body is hidden. The narrator starts to hear the old man's heart beating again. It grows louder and louder, but the policemen don't seem to hear it. The narrator eventually snaps, confessing guilt and telling the police where the body is. The eye in the telltale heart represents perception, awareness, intelligence, and truth, as well as supernatural evil. The heart represents emotion and impulsive behavior. The house symbolizes repressed guilt, the subconscious, and isolation. There are several significant themes in the telltale heart. Mental health recurs as the narrator attempts to convince the audience of sanity. Guilt occurs near the end of the story, in which the narrator's repressed guilt is revealed. Tension and time is used to build suspense. The seven days of sneaking into the room mark time. Sherlock Holmes, True Detective, even arguably The X-Files and Twin Peaks. The 20th and 21st century have seen a resurgence of interest in the tales of mystery, horror, and pure, plain, disturbing criminality that compelled Poe. While Poe's fractious temperament probably means you wouldn't have enjoyed hanging out with him, his influence on mystery, detective, horror, and even science fiction in literature, film, and television endures. <laughs>